Nobody's home. Kicking the tin can, looking for the perfect theoretical tree for reading and dreaming and watching the passers-by. Strutting a little harder when they see him perusing Sartre. Living in the realm of nowhere under the guidance of just another nobody man. Taking some time to take some time to realize that he doesn't like the scent of roses. Hey, Mr. Nobody, the world don't spin any faster when you cover your eyes. Keep building and breaking those walls, making shelves for every book burned in ignorance. Mr. Nobody's been watching sunsets since before you were born. He's given secret names to every color, and he calls the wind his brother, and you've been told since you were a kid to stay away from the nobody man. He's Mr. Boogie, a nocturnal monster, anachronistic Dickensian prophet in your favorite hat. Walking down Bradbury Street, looking for strangers on the losing end of Eugene O'Neill's short stories. But no one believes in the power of nobody. Nobody man sits underneath the weeping willow tree looking for a nobody girl to be somebody, someone, to dance the duet of the forgotten. He feeds on the dreams you let slide, kicking the tin can, humming a song found only in the archives of dreams, seeking what you take for granted, a true love, a perfect tree, a really good book to rest for just a moment in your shadow. And what is that really? Simply nothing and everything for the nobody man. This one was also from an uh, ensemble piece. This is uh, called The Lost Renaissance Man. The 21st century philosopher shakes his iridescent orange spray can and marks the cinder block wall with Mona Lisa's postmodern smile. For a quarter and a shot, he'll tell you how the universe appeared from the perverted loins of a dirty old sock and a chemical spill. He's been drawing schematics in the dust on the side of your SUV, he's constructing poems based on the algorithmic variations of your license plate. Don't look in his wild eyes, you'll get ground up in the gears. All the plans in his head for fuel efficiency and efficient fools. In cardboard structures built by Frank Lloyd Wright, he eats beans from a can and tells tales of why Icarus doesn't reach for the sun anymore. Negotiating treaties between gangs on the west side. You saw his face on the news. He cleaned your windshield this morning. At 517, he found a cure for cancer while exploring the landfill. It happened by accident while he was working on what he considers an unfinished symphony. You've been reading his book written on paper bags. It's a nonfiction piece exploring the decline of American ethics. On the road home, you stopped to shake his hand, you slipped him 20 bucks, avoided making eye contact, and never offered him a job. You put it all down in your journal, calling him the Da Vinci of Roosevelt Road, and never gave it a thought, considered it a trip to the zoo. He's an endangered species, an anomaly, and you want to care. But it's not like saving the pandas. <laughs> In the spirit of Lerjanowski, I will now give the two poem warning. <laughs> this is called Sun Toucher, and it's my obligatory poem about Icarus. <laughs> Icarus smiled as gravity pulled upon his wingless body, spiraling towards the cleansing sea. It all seems euphoric as we gaze at her bright countenance, her glowing eyes, bathing us in sensual warmth. We build, create, and dream of rockets to the moon, stepladders to the stars, wings to carry us closer to reach the top of precarious pedestals. On paraffin dreams and discarded feathers, we soar upward, basking in awe, drifting ever closer to touch, taste, feel, and beauty led to burning and blindness and Icarus 
smiled as he tumbled because he was pleased in the knowledge that he almost fucking made it. <laughs> and with laughter, he was swallowed by the sea. Some people would call me evil because I haven't heard anything from my book yet. I have a few copies of my book over there. They're $10 a copy. It's called Among These Weeds. And I will do, I will end this set with Among These Weeds. Chasing dream seeds and dandelion wishes, dust and determination. This is my element. Raked by roses, ask me about the scars on my cheeks. Among these weeds I sit, at ease with their erroneous company, bawdy stories, and awkward silence. <clears throat> this ain't for the tabloids. There are no pretty faces, only dominating asphalt and paper-thin shoes. Swirling under the city spotlights, this is a red carpet moment. Ask me about the holes in my knees, or why my eyes always blink when you take my picture. Among these weeds there is no breathing or believing. Celebration means we've survived. The flowers are silk or paper waiting to be dust. Save your accolades. Among these weeds I sit and read, sing and sleep. Can't you see? I'm one of them. I've done nothing more than scattered these seeds to the wind in attempt, attempts to catch them later. I am no hero. Take my picture and I'll punch you. Make no mistakes, nothing I do is noteworthy, except here, the place where I belong, among these weeds. Yeah. Retro podcast from Kate Cullen still available on iTunes and the Kata Garza Network slash the cafe. But in a few days, you will have YouTube video clips and a podcast available from this performance. Ladies and gentlemen, please once more give it up for Food Andrew.